for recording the project. So it's uh, one of the things I wanted to make, to make sure people noticed before we clean everything up is that right at the front here, all through Advent, has been this changing little, I don't know, display here. And, and part of it is, is what I think of as a, as a little postmodern angel. Those of you who are, and I have no idea why I think this is a postmodern angel, but it's just sort of, it's just been this cool little addition. Um, everything else is these sort of stiff wooden figures um, that probably look nothing at all like what these people actually look like. So this looks nothing at all like an angel probably too, right? So it fits right in, in that sense. Anyway, I, I've been enjoying that all the way. It, it, and it's been changing, it hasn't been the same every week. I don't know who is actually responsible for this. But anyway, for who, who, whoever has been helping us with our angels, this has been our city. So in the beginning, right, I thought, thought, you know, that's a good place to start the year. John chapter one, in the beginning. So we're going to start another year. And, um, you know, if you've been on any, well, if you've just been thinking about it, right? 2021, we're already not really sad that it's gone. Are we happy to see 2022? Well, I guess we're just gonna, gonna figure it out as we go, right? Just like we usually do. But I thought we'd start with John chapter one. In the beginning was the word. So we start this year with the word, um, but this isn't like word, right? This is the, this is what these big ideas, these big philosophical ideas of the, the word of God, the wisdom of God would be another, would be probably a better way to say this. That, that is what was, that is what is at the beginning. And when we think about the word of God or the wisdom of God, and we go back to the Old Testament to find the roots there, we probably going to be back in the book of Proverbs. And we've talked recently about the book of Proverbs and how it's you know, a little different than our concept of wisdom typically is because usually wisdom again is this grand idea about you know these things that are just beyond our understanding and the like the origin and the purpose of life and things like that and and that's not what proverbs is like proverbs is just wisdom is like how to get along with your neighbors um you know how, how to live from day to day in a way that's useful and fruitful and joyful and all of these things but the other part of Proverbs is that accepting wisdom and moving toward wisdom is the rejection of foolishness. And, and that's a good place to start the new year. Start with the new year by going, this year I want to move toward wisdom and away from foolishness. And we have to move away from foolishness at the same time, because for most of us at least, here and, and let's face it, all over the place, our lives are full enough already. Right? There really isn't anything, any place in most of our lives to stuff anything else. So if we're going to move, if we're going to add something new to our lives, we're going to have to leave something behind. So, right, we can think about our weeks, our days, and think, well, maybe there are some things I can leave behind. Maybe there's some foolish dreams, things I wish I was, or I wish I want to, I wish I could accomplish that when, when we think about them more clearly, really aren't worth pursuing. It's just a lot of energy. And if you got there, it, you wouldn't be anywhere anyway. Foolish dreams, foolish desires, things we think we want that aren't worth wanting, that aren't worth having at all. Right? Foolish habits, things that we do regularly all, all over and over again that are not useful, that are not helpful. Foolish ideas that we occupy our time with, foolish priorities that we have in our lives. I want to be clear here that we don't have to leave behind all foolishness. I think foolishness is an important part of life. I think we have to go out and be silly on a regular basis. And then do like dumb, 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 and pointless things, just because there, there they are, and, and you know, yeah, this is still life. And I'm not offering you some walking form of death as an alternative. 
to to your your current life. But even as you do these things, it's worth recognizing them for what they are, and and forgiving them, forgiving yourself, saying, "Oh, you know what? This, this, I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing foolish things, but that's not my goal. My goal is something else." So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Well, I'm assuming that one of your goals for the year is not to become God. It's probably a bit you know, on the grandiose for, for most of us, but with God, with God is an option. And we've talked before about how prayer can be basically just keeping God company. But it doesn't have to be just prayer. Our whole day can be keeping God company. This is what life is about, keeping God company. And, and in some ways, it feels very informal. It feels like, well, like we're talking about the creator of the universe, the creator and sustainer, the one who sits in majesty and throned above the heavens. And what, you know, like how do you keep a being like that company in any sense? But we just celebrated Christmas, right? and Christmas is all about God with us as a baby. And it's, it's hard to imagine, right, kneeling in worship before a baby. But it's certainly easy to imagine for most of us just being a baby company, right? hanging out there a little bit. Continual, right? right there. God with us. Not, not God watching us, not God making sure that we're being good, but God with us, Jesus. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So we can at least you know, aim for three out of four. Here. And all things were created by him and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. Which means that the first, the primary action of the wisdom of God was to make things. God really enjoyed making things. Right? Which means that if we are going to become like God, we're going to become part of the wisdom of God, then part of our life should be created. Make Part of being godlike is to make stuff, create stuff. And now, now, again, it doesn't have to be stuff because let's face it, stuff is something that most of us have enough of, but we can create other things. We can create joy. We can create love. You know, you can create love. You create love by being loving. Love is always an action. We can create connections, make new friends, introduce one friend to another friend. Say, hey, you guys are probably enjoy each other's company. This is all part of creation. And it's all part of what wisdom does, all part of this movement toward wisdom, a movement toward creation. And in him was life. And again, you know, John, John is, is the gospel that always starts with you know, sort of simple things. And then as you keep reading through the gospel, they get more and more complicated. Well, he doesn't start out simply, but he starts out simpler and it gets more and more complicated. And, and then life is one of these things, right? Because life in some ways should be pretty straightforward. That, you know, the goal of 22 is to, 2022 is to still be alive at the end of 2022. Um, right, that's life. But, but John says, that's not, that's not a big enough goal. That's not a, a, a good enough goal. You can aim higher than that, right? And so John, right, will talk as if we had time to work our way through the gospel. He will use phrases like abundant life, an everlasting life, and these much bigger ideas that life can be so much more than it is. And in him was life, and the life was the light of humankind. And the light shines on the darkness, but the darkness has not mastered it. And so this light, right, which we are, uh, right, so one way of thinking about what we are creating is to be creating light, to be creating wisdom, to be creating knowledge, to be creating connections, all of these things 
you can think of as light, bringing light to a dark world, which means that it's for everyone. Right? It's not just right, for us, or it's not just for people who are worthy, or people who are like us. The thing about the sun is it shines on everybody, not just on some people and not on others. The language here is tricky. We are using this here, uh, uh, the women's lectionary, um, and it, it and the uh, translation there is the light shines in the bleakness, um, and it uses bleakness rather than darkness because it doesn't want to create a dichotomy between white and black and assume that white is good and black is bad, um, and then we get a racist scripture and it all just sort of goes downhill from there. And and bleakness isn't. It doesn't sound as good to me, but then that's just because I'm used to darkness, right? And, and we get used to bleakness if we used it more often. And But bleakness is also a great description of like, how life can be if done wrong. Right? It isn't so much darker physically, it's just bleak. And moving away from bleakness is always a good idea. So that's a lot of stuff already, right? I mean, like, if you needed a New Year's resolution, I've just given you, you know, five or six of them. It's probably three or four more than you wanted anyway. But this is what happens right? if you actually like pay attention to John chapter one, verses one to five. It gives us a place to go. It gives us a place to go toward wisdom, toward light toward joy and love and harmony, all of these things, toward life. Good luck in the new year. Our next song is somewhere. 